But with that said, let's get into it then. We got Consta with the Mew, and we got Arthur with the Lost Box with Spiritomb, uh, but no Drapion. And Consta is playing Fusion Mew, uh, which is a little bit less scared of the Spiritomb. Uh, you're still always like, kind of equally afraid of Drapion. You're still kind of equally always afraid of Drapion. For prize cards here, nothing really important prize, although Consta's one of Trek and Choose's prize, which you hate to see that being prized. Hate to see the one of Trek and Choose being prized. Um, See, so yeah, nothing too important on either side that's prized, to be honest. I mean, second, second save by being prized. Like, you want to use save a lot in this matchup a lot of the time, but heavy balls in the deck, so we'll find out at some point. Um, Yeah, nothing like super game breaking one way or the other, or should have like a huge impact. We'll see who won the coin flip here. I imagine both players would choose to go first. And yeah, going for, I feel like actually the coin flip win is, is like based on the list because Arthur does play Spirit Tomb. The coin flip win is like a pretty big deal, unless like Arthur like opens the Spirit Tomb in one of the games, but because like, if Consta can go first in two of the three games and like establish a board state before you get spirit tombed, like that's pretty good. But now like going into Consta's uh, turn, th like this turn, um, Arthur's going to get spirit tomb in play probably. And then Consta's turn is going to be like pretty, uh, it's going to get hurt quite a bit. Cause like you're not, you're now you're going to have to like try and like go for Elsa Sparkle to put energy on your Genesex and stuff like that instead of like doing a more aggressive play. So uh, but if you go first as Consta, you can like turn one attach a fusion energy to a Genesect. And then next turn, you could even just like judge plus attack with Mew. And then the turn after that, attach another fusion energy to a Genesect or maybe Elsa Sparkle that turn. You have like a lot less flexibility when you go second. So um, the opening hand here does look pretty good for Consta, though. It's got triple Genesect, I believe, and triple Genesect and a battle VIP pass or two or not battle VIP pass, the four seal stone. So that will go get a. The Force Shieldstone can go get that Sparkle, Sparkle the energy to the Genesects, and then draw cards from there. But yeah, but it kind of like forces you down that route on turn one as Consta. Like you can't get a turn one attack off. I mean, you could still get a turn one attack off as Consta, but that would involve only putting one fusion on one Genesect, which then means your draw power is like severely like nerfed. Your draw power for their shame is severely nerfed. So you want to get the double fusion energy on the two Genesects and then even get like a third or maybe even a fourth fusion energy on like the third and the fourth Genesect and... So on and so forth. So, so is DTMU better now? Um, well, people are trying to play Spirit Tomb quite a bit because of like the Lugia hype, and it also answers DTMU directly, like as a really hard counter. So, I wouldn't say it's a pretty good opening here though for Martha though. Double Battle VIP pass had the Ditto start as well. There's that Ditto start coming in to get that that effective fifth Comfy starter. There's the Spirit Tomb. Yeah, there's a lot of Spirit Tomb right now. So I don't know if I would say that. DT Mew is like the better Mew. I would probably say Fusion Mew. Maybe, if you, yeah, but Fusion Mew seems like it is probably the better Mew right now because of how much Spirit Tomb there is. I don't understand Mew. How does it keep winning when other decks have counters and one shots? I mean, stuff one shot in Mew has never been a big deal for Mew. Mews can overcome things one at KO Nets points in games. Um, and not everyone's playing a counter. Like, we see Consta's in the finals here with the Fusion Mew. There was another Mew in top eight, though, that was the DT Mew. That one's going to have the harder time against the Spirit Tombs for sure. Um, yeah, Arthur's still cooking. Has a third Comfy in hand, but probably doesn't want to bench the third Comfy here. Because you want to leave some bench space open for attackers when you start getting judged and Ionode or Roxanne. So I, I would be surprised to see this other Comfy come down here from Arthur. I think you'd probably just pass. Actually, I would dislike this other Comfy to come down here. Because you want to be able to have it set up as many attackers on your bench as possible. Because you already have to put Spirit Tomb in play. That already kind of eats into your, your bench potential. Um... Does it overcome it through disruption, be consistent, or what makes it so resilient? I mean, Mew's just really good. Mew's just a really good deck. So, like, yeah, Mew's been broken for a long time. So, despite the fact that there are cards that are really good against it, like Spirit Tomb and Drapion, that any deck can basically play, um, enough of them have to play it. And even when they play it, like, DT Mew can definitely overcome Drapion, no problem. Fusion Mew can overcome Drapion, no problem. DT Mew can't really overcome Spirit Tomb most of the time. It's pretty tough. But Fusion Mew could overcome Spirit Tomb. So it's like, even the even though the counters exist, you're, you're, it's not like an auto loss just because they play a counter. Um, as we will see in this uh, this set here for sure. So prize checking happening from Consta. Actually, because of the Spirit Tomb, to be honest, the Avery's probably pretty solid in this matchup for Consta. The Avery's probably a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid card in this matchup to help deal with the... Just like the, the more awkward bench because of the Spirit Tomb. Um, I would say overall, like you'd rather play. I would assume. I think probably overall, you'd rather play double turbo Mew when you can. But yeah, here come the the sparkle. You'd rather play double turbo Mew when you can. Um, 
but if you have to settle for Fusion Mew because of Spear Tomb, then it's like not a big deal. Um, but I think I I don't know. I would probably say Double Turbo Mew is probably actually I don't know. I don't know, like the power of getting off like the turn one attack going second is like okay for Fusion Mew. I don't know actually to be honest. They're both good. I don't know which one I would like if I if I could just like pick one that I wanted to play. I don't know which one I I, I enjoy playing Double Turbo Mew more than Fusion Mew. I think. Um, oh, I thought we were gonna, maybe going to see Const of Vacuum away that Force Seal Stone, but I guess it's probably better to save that in case you're drawn to a dead card here. There's it for two. Another Force Seal Stone. And I can't tell what that last card in the hand is here for Consta. It's a Genesect. Another Force Seal Stone comes down. Is going to play the Vacuum. Lost on the Genesect, lost on a Force Seal Stone. Makes sense. You don't really want to bench. You need to keep open the option of Psychically being here. You don't really want to get rid of that Genesect either, though, as Consta, because you want to, because like one of. One of the things that Arthur's going to target is your Genesex, but Ar Consta definitely wants to draw more cards this turn, and ideally draw another Mew to, like, switch into. Does not find a Mew. Does find an Ice Q, though. So it could retreat to Ice Q here, I guess. Your Mew getting punched is, like, not super cool. Um, ice Q does just get knocked out by Cram, right? How much HP does Ice Q have? Is it 110 or 130? It's 110, right? It's 110, right? I think so. Maybe it has 130. I don't remember. I literally played the card. Yeah, I literally played the card. I don't remember how much HP it has, though. I think Mew fears is Zard. And that's not, double turbo Mew, I don't even think fears Zard that much either. Um, so we possibly could see an escape rope play here from Arthur, plus like Raikou to KO one of the Genesex. That would actually be a pretty good play here from Arthur to like start to limit the, the draw power on Consta's side. <clears throat> 110? Okay, that's what I thought. Deoxys is 110. Um... So yeah, Arthur, if Arthur could pull off an escape route plus, but he's just going to go for a cram attack here, I guess, and KO the ice cube, it looks like. And that's all, actually, that's all Arthur has. Yeah, is the cram attack. No Colrus, which kind of sucks. No other switch card, so can't use another Comfy. Just cram, KO, ice cube, get the first prize card here. Uh, and it's okay to get the one prize knockout, because now you can try and KO Mu VMAX plus also KO a Genesect. Of course, that is going to be a little bit harder because of, like, no Drapion or whatever, so it's going to be hard to get through the Mu VMAX. Uh, there is a Judge in hand there for Consta. Has an Ultra Ball as well, so could have Ultra Balled for a Mu V or Mu V Max, but valuing those other cards pretty highly, it looks like. I think one of them was a Double Turbo, which you do need, like, a decent amount of, so... Um, yeah. Why is almost no one bringing Lawson and Gudra, even though everybody's saying it has Pog matchups? Who is saying it has Pog matchups? Is that your sources? There's the four. There is an Ultra Ball. There's also a Fusion Energy in the hand. So I think you do have to like Ultra Ball it away here, though. <clears throat> There's the Ultra Ball. Goes for the Mew Max. So it has a guaranteed attack this turn. And then has a Fusion Energy that can be attached to the Genesect, I believe. Um, and then can start drawing with these Genesects here. I don't think Kansa attached yet. Maybe I'm wrong on that, though. Maybe that Double Turbo was attached this turn. No, okay, it was not. I just want to definitely find another Mu V here. And there we go. There's the Feather Ball for it. Looking good. Genesect again for two. Has another Feather Ball. Go get another Mu V. Draw again. Repeat. Could attach a Choice Spell as well to probably the... Probably attaches the Bench Mu V because you are Techno Blasting this turn. You want to pos like I don't know like Arthur could just like punch with a Dragonite or a Raikou this turn and that wouldn't be like unreasonable to like try and get through this Mew V Max. So probably choice spell to a bench Mew V just for the potential of a response because the active is techno blasting so you're not gonna be able to you're probably not attacking with the active on the next turn but is attaching an active. It's a little bit better on the bench but it's probably not by a whole lot. Drew into a path so could actually throw out this path here. Doesn't have an answer to the path themselves, though. So you slow down the draw power of Arthur by stopping the Greninja. Which So I don't hate putting path in play here because you do have the ability to attack for the next couple turns, but it's probably correct to hold it because the hand doesn't have an out to your own path. Well, Consta's thinking about it, though. So is it worth doing? There's, there's the ability to attack on the following turn, so just wants to slow Arthur down. There we go. Techno Blast for the knockout. Yeah, it does have an escape rope and a switch cart in hand, so it definitely can attack next turn. Just does not have the ability to bump that path. And, of course, Arthur doesn't know that. And there's, there's usually a pretty, it's usually a pretty good, uh, assumption to assume, uh, that you, if Mew puts path in play, they probably have a way to bump the path to the peak. So 
Still no Colrus from Arthur here. Had to hard retreat the Comfy as well. I don't know if Arthur's even attacking this turn, to be honest. I don't think Arthur is attacking this turn. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Arthur's attacking this turn. That Judge is doing work here for sure. Yep, that hand sucks. And I believe the Comfy is like an energy and something else. Energy and Heavy Ball. It shouldn't be too difficult. Though. Arthur should know if there's anything really super important prize. Has already checked the prize cards. What was prize? I don't remember. There's a Sableye, I guess. Is the Sableye worth the Psychic Energy? I actually am not sure. I guess you need some attackers at some point. So we got the Heavy Ball. Get our Sableye. We're not close to 10, though. We're only at 6 here. We could get to 10 next turn, I guess. I don't know if Arthur actually even benches this Sableye, to be honest. Maybe just hold it. Yep, just the pass. I guess the Sableye could get bossed there. Oh, no, it does bench the Sableye. Okay. But I think Kansa honestly just wants the KO. Kansa should just... Oh, I don't know about that. This is... This, I don't know about setting up a Comfy here. This is literally all of Arthur's draw power. I don't know if I like that. Because Arthur needs... This is the, Arthur's only form of draw power is Comfy. I thought Kansa maybe should have used the switch card there to guarantee a knockout on the Comfy. But I guess maybe Kansa... Kansa had a boss in hand as well. So, so Kansa could have gone escape rope. And then if Arthur sends up something that's not Comfy, Kansa could have gone boss KO a Comfy. Um, what's the correct send up? Probably the Sableye. You probably send up Sableye here as... Actually, no, you do send up the Tomb, right? Actually, I think you're right, Soda. Yeah, because all the Genesects have fusion energy and the other Genesects in the Lost Zone. Yeah, the correct send up is Tomb, yeah. Um, yeah, the tomb is pointless now. The, yeah, the correct setup was always there from Arthur there was tomb. That's actually a pretty huge misplay because Arthur has the hand for Arthur is basically dead. Except then the only draw power on board is the Comfies. Um I think I, I, I don't know what Consta would have done. It would have been interesting to see Arthur push up the spirit tomb. Yeah, I forgot. Like the there's a Genesect in the Lost Zone. The rest of the Genesects have the fusion energy. Um so unless Arthur plays like a Giacomo or whatever, Giacomo, whatever, however you pronounce the name of that card, which Arthur does not play that card, then there's no reason to like not just sacrifice the spirit tomb here. So it's a pretty big this is actually a pretty big throw here from Arthur, actually, based on Arthur the current situation where the Comfies are the draw power. It would have been interesting if Arthur had sent up Spirit Tomb though. If Arthur had sent I would have wanted to, I would be curious to see if Kansa would have bossed a Comfy. That's what I think is the best play from Kansa. But I almost wanted Arthur to send up Spirit Tomb to see what Kansa would have done, to be honest. Um uh, Yeah, I would have been interesting to see for sure. He's just going for a Elsa Sparkle from Consta. Does have a Fusion Energy in the deck. Decides not to get it, though? Or is it in the hand? It might be in the hand, actually. No, the Fusion Energy is in the hand. So we'll probably see Consta attach that to one of the Genesects to make a Genesect a viable attacker. I don't think there's any reason to save it. I guess you could save... The only reason to save the Fusion Energy here would be... It would allow any of your Genesects to be, be, uh, be pivoted through a Fusion Energy. So that'd be a reason to save it. It's probably not worth it. Making a Genesect a potential attacker is probably better. And then, yeah, the Mew just comes back up. Unfortunately, has to... Well, no, you could actually play a tablet here from Consta. Um, but has to go with the Technoblast. And does remove the most important card from play, which is that Comfy. Also has a Vacuum in hand now as well. So it does have an out to the path of the peak for the future. All right. Over to Arthur. Still not cooking. I assume one of those cards is not a Colrus with how hard Arthur is thinking about this. At this point, the question might become for Arthur is like, when do you concede... Um, this can be a pretty long matchup just because, like, Lost Box can take a long time to win games sometimes. Yeah, w when do you concede here as Arthur? Could be a question. Um, okay, does have Nest Ball. Could have actually attacked with Raikou there. Cons or Arthur could have taken the Raikou. Was getting to seven there. Has a Mirage Gate and Escape Rope in hand. I don't hate the idea of take Raikou, bench Raikou, play Escape Rope, and then see what Consta does. And then Mirage Gate attack. You would have been able to actually... It might have been guaranteed two prize cards, right? At that point, you are the you're under the threat of Roxanne, but I don't know. Kans has to find the Roxanne. Yeah, the Raikou was guaranteed two prize cards there. I didn't hate the Raikou take there. You're getting to seven. Raikou takes two prize cards. Kansa would come back, KO it. And eh, do you just always lose the prize trade? Prize trade there as Arthur though. But how do you win the prize trade this route either as Arthur? You're so far behind in damage, anyways. What is your win condition here as Arthur? I don't even know what your win condition is to be honest. As Arthur, I'm not sure what the win condition is. Um, so I think that I like the Raikou play just because it does something and puts pressure on Kansa, to be honest. But um, oh, Arthur's even just playing the escape rope. 
Oh, I guess Arthur can use Greninja here. I guess the Greninja is happening, right? Okay, I guess that's something as well. I forgot about the Greninja, to be honest. Okay, maybe this is better from, from Arthur then, to do the Greninja play instead. You are putting the pressure on the Genesex on the bench. Yeah, okay, I, I don't hate this, actually, to be honest. I forgot about Greninja as a possibility. Well, I didn't see the water energy in hand. I didn't even know the Greninja was a possibility, to be honest. I didn't see the water in hand. I saw the lightning in the hand. I was like, I don't hate the Raikou play. But I think this is probably better from Arthur, to be honest. Um... Just punch two Genesex for 90 each. The one with the two fusion and the one with the... I don't know if the four... I guess you want to kill the one with the four seal stone, possibly. Um, you want to kill the one with the four seal stone, possibly, so that you remove it as a vacuum target to like thin out the deck, thin out the hand later from Consta, and maybe you'd have to lose the choice belt. Uh, and then from Consta here, to be honest, uh, Consta, I should just... I boss KO Comfy is honestly probably the best thing for Consta to do here. Uh, and does have the boss. So I'd like to see Boss KO Comfy here from Kansa, I think. Here comes a vacuum, though. Bumping the path. So he's going to get aggressive here. That doesn't seem necessary, though. You could have just bo just Boss KO the... Switch card. Yeah, I feel like just Boss KO Comfy here would have been fine. Would be fine from Kansa. And leave path in play to stop the only draw power Arthur has. The only draw power Arthur has is through the Greninja right now. So... um. I hated keeping the belt with shoes there. Yeah, I didn't like that either, Soda. Is that what happened there? Kansa used shoes, saw a choice belt, and kept the choice belt. Yeah, I don't know why, what's the point of keeping the choice belt. He had plenty of tablets left and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like Kansa could have left path and play and just bossed the... Oh, wait, you know what, though? You know what, though? Maybe not. Maybe not. Because it depends how much Kansa knows about Arthur's list. But Arthur does play two Roxanne. So if Kansa knows about the two Roxanne of Arthur, I do kind of like the idea of Kansa playing more aggressively here. Being like, well, you've done nothing like the past three turns. I know you play two Roxanne. When I draw this third prize card, do I really want to have a path in play and get Roxanne? Probably not. So let me just bump the path, and I'll just KO your Greninja uh, instead. Also, I guess maybe KOing the Greninja does make more sense, because if you don't KO the Greninja, then Arthur could use Greninja again and go 90-90 with, like, Rod Gate again next turn. So actually, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, I think this is probably the correct play here from Kansa. It makes sense. So yeah, go through your deck a little bit more, because who knows, you might be hit, getting hit with the Roxanne. If, if, you, if you do get hit with the Roxanne next turn, you don't want to path to the peak and play to go with it for Arthur. You don't want to give Arthur the free path to the peak. Has an Ultra Ball, but chooses not to use it. There's a Meloetta and a Battle VIP pass in the hand. The idea of keeping the Meloetta around is more draw power. It's just like another basic to have him play for later to draw more cards with your Genesex. I think it's probably the reason to keep the Meloetta around. But... Could have also just Ultra Ball there. It seemed like it would have been fine. There's the KO, Max Miracle KO. Lone Comfy now for Arthur. Does have the Nest Ball in hand still. What is the what is the attack potential here for Arthur? There's another Comfy. We just need to find Colrus. Arthur just needs to find a Colrus. He still has yet to find a Colrus. Here comes the switch cart. Still holding the Nest Ball. Could could use Rod plus Nest Ball to get back your ninja at the end of the sequence, though. Which is probably what we are gonna see here from Arthur. We'll see Rod recover Greninja. Should that have been done beforehand? Maybe not. Or maybe there's another Comfy in the deck. Are we just going third Comfy? Okay, we're going third Comfy. This will get it. Actually, this does get to 10 in the loss zone. What is the prize trade here, though, from Arthur Ever? Does Arthur ever win this game? How does Arthur win the game? Okay, one Genesect this turn. Kind of cool. Put 10 here, 2 here. You go 10 here, 2 here. And then next turn, you could go Greninja and go... Okay, so you could go 10-2. Kansa goes down to two prize cards. And you use Greninja. Then Arthur attacks with Greninja and goes 90-90. And then goes 10-2. And then actually KOs the three Genesex. That works, right? Am I doing the math correctly there? 10, 2, 90, 90, uh, 170, 10, 2. I think I did the math right there. Someone tell me if I'm trolling. But actually, I think that would win the game here for Arthur. It's still quite a ways away from it, but. There we go. Comfy again. Hopefully, a finally a Colrus. Or, I mean, Roxanne, I guess, works at this point as well. Just something to draw cards. <clears throat> <laughs> now, the question is, does Arthur see that line of play? Because, yeah, Arthur would the uh, could theoretically win the game first year, actually. Oh my gosh, still has yet to see a Colrus. And is this the last Super Rod, actually? Because there's two Super Rods in the Lost Zone. I actually don't know how many Super Rod. I'm actually unsure as to how many... I don't know how many Energy are left either, to be honest. Super Rod and Energy. 
And we'll look at Arthur's list real fast. There is four Superod. Okay, so there's still one Superod left. <clears throat> still no Colrus. They're all in the deck as well, I believe. For oh, no, there's one prize. There's one Colrus prized. It's possible Arthur pulled it off the prize cards before getting judged, though. There's a lot of supporters in the deck here for Arthur to have not seen one. I don't know about the attaching the water active, though, because you are still trying to set up that Greninja play, though. You need to set up the Greninja play at some point. There's the 10, and then two on the other one. Yeah, it's still possible for Arthur to win here. It's two prize cards. Goes down to three now. But now, unfortunately for Arthur, Arthur can be Roxanne now, which is going to make it... It's going to be pretty tough to... Yeah, I would like to have seen... Mm, how would I like to have seen Arthur play that? Maybe that was the correct line, so because you need the water, you need the psychic... But now I don't think Arthur can actually attack with Greninja anymore. I feel like that water energy had to not be put on the Comfy and had to be left in the deck, actually, to be honest. I feel like that water energy had to be left in the deck. Or maybe Arthur should just recover Greninja over the water. I feel like it's almost like... Is it, it might not be possible for Arthur... If there is one water left in the deck, I guess it is possible. If there's a water left... There's a water... There's definitely a Psychic left in the deck. There might also be a water in there. Uh, but for Consul here, I think you just hit him with the Roxanne and take the knockout. There's a lot... Ooh, Analog City to go on top of it. I don't see a Roxanne boss um the other stable i think is still around though so it's it's still there okay so it's just gonna be a max miracle for the ko it does go to the law zone it's possible he might have to save life first right yeah there might have to be a save life first here i think we just see you should see a roxanne here from arthur just start with the roxanne yeah start the sequence with the roxanne Jeez, it took arthur so long to play a supporter that's pretty unfortunate to be honest arthur arthur is getting pretty close here and had to like Play pretty, like, just bad. Not, like, play bad, but, like, the resource management was... There was so much strain on Arthur's resources because there was nothing to work with. So every comfy was, like... You don't have a lot of cards to work with in your hand because you haven't played Roxanne or Colrus the whole freaking game. <laughs> it's just, like... Oh, but there's the water energy, so it is possible for Arthur to pull it off here. Comes the comfy. If there's a gate left as well, there needs to be a gate left as well. But there is that last water left. Get rid of a Colrus. What are we getting? Cross switcher over Colrus? Well, I guess you have the Roxanne on the last turn, probably. There's the Sableye. Has the water. Needs the Greninja. It it it's it's here for Arthur. So we're gonna see 10 and 2. Um, I don't know how many switch cart Consta plays. I'm curious about that. I'm gonna look up Consta's already played one switch cart. Consta only plays one switch cart, and no other way to remove. Oh, actually it goes for the KO. Wait, what? Oh, so Arthur's game plan here is double cross switcher KO with Dragonite. Okay. I guess that's maybe... I mean, it seems maybe it's like just as likely, to be honest. Also, it does play around Penny and second switch card. Um, yeah, Dragonite cross switcher is probably better, to be honest. Because you maybe Arthur might not know how many switch card and or if Kansa plays Penny. The Greninja play... And it might actually just be a more likely, uh, more likely play to pull off, to be honest. I wasn't thinking in terms of the switch, the uh, cross switchers at all. Um, so this this seems fine here from Arthur, to be honest. Uh, so Consta is definitely going to be looking for that Roxanne. Yeah, th and this also does play around second switch cart or, like I said, the Penny. Consta doesn't play either of those, but just in case Consta does, I guess you never know. But now I think it is just going to be the Roxanne here from Consta. Roxanne, and then Arthur like literally has to draw into Roxanne off of the Roxanne to have a chance. Otherwise, it's probably just not going to happen. Honestly, I wouldn't have hated to see Arthur bench the Dragonite. Um, I think Arthur benching Dragonite there wouldn't have been a bad play. Because it's one less card you need. You did just Roxanne Consta, and Consta only has uh, one Genesect draw on board. So the chance that Consta has the boss KO on your Genesect... Uh, the boss KO not on your Genesect. The, the chance that Consta has boss KO on your Dragonite is like not very high. Wait, does Consta have three prize cards left or two? Shouldn't Consta be at two prize cards remaining? Or am I trolling? Consta should be at two prize cards remaining, right? On the graphic, it says three. Two? Okay, okay. I'm not losing my mind. Yeah, I would have hate to see... Because you, as Arthur here, you have to know... Well, I guess the Roxanne is maybe just as much of a possibility as the boss play. The boss KO on the Dragonite. Well, I know. I feel like the Roxanne is more likely because it's just one card. The boss play is a boss and a fusion or in a fusion tablet. Um, I, I think Arthur probably should have benched the Dragonite that turn. Just one less piece you need to find when you get Roxanne here. Or Judge. Like, maybe you get Judged. And Judge is a little bit more likely for you to be able to draw out of it, but you still need to pull it off. You would just lose to Kansa if Kansa has the boss KO on your Dragonite. But if Kansa just has Roxanne here instead, which is what Kansa's always going to go for if you don't bench Dragonite, um, and possibly only has the only ability to draw into that over the boss KO, 
I don't know. I don't hate. I don't hate the idea of Arthur going for the for the other line there. To be honest, I don't hate the idea of the other line happening. Where, where or or Arthur benching the Dragonite. I wouldn't hate to see the Dragonite get benched there. Even though you do just lose if the boss play is available for Consta. All right, Max Miracle KO back to Law Zone, and yeah, Consta like basically has to have Roxanne here. If Consta does have Roxanne here, though, it's possible to make this thing work. Or maybe off this first comfort we need it. Okay, it is a nest ball. Hey, we're pretty close actually. Oh wait, and there's the four seal stone in hand. Has Arthur used the V? No, hasn't used V star power yet. Okay, so you could go. Oh sheesh, this is actually we're like there. We're no, we're close. We're not there yet. And so the question is, do you retreat to the other comfy, and use that comfy to try and find Roxanne? Or as Arthur here, do you just use the four seal stone and draw the ro use the Roxanne first? I don't hate the idea of using Roxanne first. And that's what Arthur has to debate here. Do I retreat to the other comfy, use that comfy, or do I just do this, grab Roxanne, play Roxanne? And you could play the... There's a gate in hand here for Arthur. You could play that gate right now to search the water out of the deck. I believe there's a water in the deck, right? Yeah. And then you'd have to draw into the other gate plus Super Rod. Um, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Because you could play... Because now it's like two dead cards in your deck here as Arthur. Or they're... And now there's two gates in the deck. But you don't need two gates. Well, I guess if you draw into two gates, if you don't draw into the water, it's fine. Mm. You could play the gate. Arthur could have played the gate, got the water, attached it to the Dragonite. And then you do need to find the other gate, Super Rod, and Double Cross Switcher. Four cards. But there's two less cards in your deck. Actually, I don't know the math on that, to be honest. But there's, that's like the two lines to take there. The other thing Arthur could have done as well, like I said, you could have retreated to the other comfy first as Arthur and used that to try and find Roxanne to keep the four seal stone around for after the Roxanne. But it does seem correct to probably just go four seal stone for rocks. I, I do I do think in my head, four seal stone first for the rocks in makes sense. The other line of just playing the gate, I'm actually not too sure on. Because now there is like a couple lines of uh, now there's like more cards you could draw into that equal like dead hands, basically, I guess. But I'm actually not sure to be honest. Um Yeah, I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure, not sure. About like playing the gate first. Because there's another gate in the deck to utilize. We'll see what Arthur gets, though. I can't see the hand. It does have one more comfy to use as well, because we can retreat into the comfy and then do the double cross switcher. How close is it? It's a vacuum and a chorus. I guess... Well, this must mean that Arthur does not have the play. Goes for the vacuum, actually. Oh, wait. Are we close? Thinking about going to get Greninja. Does have the double cross switcher. Oh, it's, it's literally one card short. Huh. So what is the play here from Arthur? Do you just double cross switcher up the... There it is, yeah. Double cross switcher on the Genesect. And he's going to go send up the Comfy instead. I guess you're, you're hoping the Genesect gets stuck no matter what. So you may as well just get put the Flower Selecting in the active here as Arthur. That makes sense. Here comes the Super Rod. Greninja Lightning Water. Interesting. Um, Why did we get the Greninja here, though? Aren't we, like, out of... What does the Greninja ever do here for us? I was actually curious. Wouldn't we have rather just like used Comfy first here as Arthur to try and find the gate? Why would we put a bunch of dead cards in the deck first before we use Comfy? I'm actually so confused by this. Then Arthur scoops. Wait, didn't Arthur already retreat though? Jessica can retreat if Arthur doesn't get rid of Court. Yeah, but Arthur had the vacuum in hand, right? Wait, did Arthur just throw this last turn? Yeah, I honestly forgot about the beach court, to be honest. But Arthur's kept the vacuum, so you could vacuum the beach court. But Arthur already retreated, right? So, yeah, I think Arthur just threw this last turn. Or there was definitely a possibility for Arthur to win. So I think Arthur first off forgot that he already retreated. And then was like, oh, okay, I can cross switch this comfy into the active and then retreat this comfy. Oh, that's what it seems like. Uh, And then Arthur super rotted before using comfy, which makes no sense here, because you don't want to hit water or lightning energy off this this comfy use here. I, was Arthur thinking that if I can get to the Greninja and then use Greninja, but I don't think there's any enough energy left in the deck for, for Arthur to do that. So the way Arthur should have sequenced this turn, let's talk about the way Arthur should have sequenced this turn. So this is the hand off the Roxanne. We'll move past the other things we're already talking about. Um, has it up a cross switcher. Um, use this first comfy, got the vacuum, which makes sense. You do need the vacuum here over the colors because you do need to bump the beach court to trap the Genesect. At this point, Arthur cannot actually... Um, uh, 
at this point, Arthur can't actually win the game anymore. So Arthur's game plan going into this turn was, going into the turn, Arthur was like, okay, cool. My game plan is attack with Dragonite or double cross switcher, um, double cross switcher up the Genesect with, and then knock it out with Dragonite. So I, need, I got the Dragonite, I use my Roxanne, I need to draw a double cross switcher, I need to draw water energy, I need to draw a gate and rod, cool. Um, first comfy has been used, has the beach card in play, Roxanne gets used. And then Arthur, next the next thing happens, happens is Rock, uh, Arthur retreats to the other Comfy, which makes sense. That seems to be the best play. And then on this Comfy use, if Arthur gets Mirage Gate, the game ends. Arthur wins, but doesn't get Mirage Gate. So now Arthur has to be like, hmm, okay, well, I don't have Mirage Gate. How do I win this game from here? Well, I need to stop concert from taking a prize card next turn. So let me double cross up the Genesect. And then off this Comfy, there's a vacuum. So I can vacuum away the Beach Court. Um, so I think the play here from Arthur should be at this point the play here from arthur should be don't play the super rod <laughs> don't play the super rod that's for sure the play here from arthur should be double cross switcher up the genesect off the bench send up your own dragonite because if you send up the other comfy and bump the beach court you might not be able to move that comfy anymore so you send up dragonite attach water to dragonite double cross switcher up the genesect via on consta's bench vacuum away the beach court get rid of the mana fee out of your hand and then pass and then hope to top deck mirage gate or colrus into mirage gate next turn on Arthur's side, but then pushes up this other comfy. And this makes me think that Arthur thought that Ar that he hadn't retreated yet. This makes me think that Arthur thought, oh, I can still retreat off Beach Court, but had forgot about that they had just retreated off Beach Court. Um, and send up this comfy, and then plays the super, playing the super rod here is like, never makes any sense. I don't understand how that would ever make sense to play the super rod. The only thing I can think of is that Arthur was like, okay, if I can get into Greninja off the comfy without loss owning one of the energy, I can then, Use Greninja to discard the water in hand to draw two cards, and then with those two cards, I can get Water Mirage Gate and then attach Water Mirage Gate. If there was another water in the deck, but I don't think there is another water in the deck. So this sequence never makes sense here from Arthur. Arthur should never play the Super Rod. Shouldn't ever send up the Comfy. Should send up the Dragonite, vacuum away the Beach Court, hold the Super Rod, attach the Dragonite, and pass. And then hope that Consa goes draw past, uh, and then win from there. No, that's because then you don't have the Mirage Gate still, Soda. You're close. You're close, but you're a little. You're pretty far off. To be honest as well. Um, but yeah, after after the super rod gets played like that, like Arthur can never win. There was a mirage gate in the lighting energy, but yeah, I think I think Arthur thought that the beach court was. Um, I think Arthur thought that the beach that they that he hadn't retreated yet, but he had. So, but actually had a chance to win that one. I'm curious to know what Consta's hand was, to be honest, because if Consta actually. There's only three fusion or four fusion Pokemon in play and one Genesect. So two card hand. It's possible Kansa couldn't move the Genesect and actually take a knockout next turn. But, um, so yeah. I mean, it, eh, I would say probably overall it's probably likely that Kansa was able to get the knockout there. But if you don't, then you just like kind of threw away a game there as as Arthur potentially. So definitely a, a mess up there on Arthur's side. Okay, game two. Genesect being prized doesn't really matter. The fusion energy being prized actually does kind of matter or can matter. Maybe not too much. You still have three in the deck, so you should be fine. Um. Yeah, you want to vacuum the court and then hope that <clears throat> something else happens. And then prize cards. I mean, the cram being prize is kind of annoying, but Arthur should be going first in this game, I assume. And then plays heavy ball, so has like time to find it and doesn't need it on like the first turn of the game. So shouldn't it be a big deal here for Arthur. <clears throat> has a course in hand. Thankfully, Arthur already has a course in hand. <laughs> but the big thing here for Arthur, though, is can Arthur find that? Oh, no. Arthur can't find the spirit tomb. Does find the heavy ball, but that's only going to get the Urgle. And Urgle is not Spiritomb. So, no turn one Spiritomb. That's like, that's a really good for Kansa. That's like a free turn where Kansa does not have to like sparkle. Although it looks like Kansa's hand maybe has the sparkle play, to be honest. Actually, no, Kansa's hand sucks. <laughs> Kansa has like a dead hand. Um, sorry, we got the Urgle. Urgle's still good, but not at, not that good. Urgle's not that good. Um, So no spirit tomb turn one, but to be honest, actually Kansa doesn't have have an out to a genesect anyways. Retreat to the Manaphy. Huh. Interesting. I don't know how much I like this. Clocking up your bench with a Manaphy potentially. Like you obviously don't want your comfy to die here as Arthur. But if Con what if Kansa gets off a turn one attack plus an escape rope? And then you also put Spirit Tomb in play. Now you have a Spirit Tomb and a Manaphy on your bench. I don't know about this retreat, to be honest. I may be able to let it uh Yeah, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I'm not sure about that. Just Manaphy in play is just so bad. So, yeah, Manaphy in play is so bad. So, I'm like trying to think of like, yeah, it's just so bad to have Manaphy in play. I don't know. <laughs> it's so bad. You appreciate 23 months there, Stark, and the uh, 21 months there, Pac. 
Why do you want flower sucking energy? Yeah, which is, I don't think there ever, there's never a reason, so yeah, there's never a reason. It's just a mistake. Mistakes happen all the time. There's no, there's almost a turn one attack here for Kansa, but not quite. Has the sparkle. Um, I guess you can use energy mix. <laughs> yeah. But now all your fusion energy are going on to non Genesex. So if Arthur can find Spirit Tomb next turn, you just won't be able to draw any cards for the rest of the game as a consta. Um, is that turn one KO really that possible for the fusion deck? Yeah. Because there's no Spirit Tomb in play, so consta doesn't have to stress putting fusion energy on Genesex. But now the fusion energy are not on Genesex at all, and there's also no turn one attack. Um, I guess we're going to see the energy mix to put a probably put a double turbo on the bench of... Uh, uh mu v doesn't put the path in play as well which is probably correct um dropping mana fee before console drops ice cube would a read oh that is true there is the ice cube i forgot about the ice cube to be honest um i forgot about ice cube maybe the mana fee is is correct to go ahead and throw out there as arthur then because no matter what maybe you just want it just want it in play i could see that i could see that i don't hate the mana fee as much anymore to be honest i was kind of a hater before but now i'm kind of like a, oh, okay okay I guess if Ice Q is going to be like a threat to like pick off our Comfy off the bench. Yeah, but I was kind of okay with our Comfy dying in the active, so I don't know if I am a fan anymore, to be honest. We'll let it ride. All right, Cross Switcher and something else to the Lost Zone to get Dragonite, Raikou, and an Escape Rope. So the Cram attack is happening here for Arthur. The question is, what is going to get hit? Is it going to be... Um, does have concealed cards to work with still, but it's choosing to not concealed cards yet. So maybe it just wants to hold that water. I guess you do want the option of to be able to attack with Dragonite this turn, possibly. And you could... Is it possible to get there? Actually, it might not even be possible to get there, to be honest. But you want to attack with these two prizes probably sooner than later, so... Uh, still no out to the Spirit Tomb. Uh, is thinking about going to the Attach Retreat, the active. Or maybe this is going to go to the Greninja, actually. Here. You do need more cards here from Arthur. I would like to see the Concealed Cards happen. I want to see Concealed Cards happen here from Arthur. I think you just need more cards. And play the Escape Rope. Or play Escape Rope first. And then see what concept pushes up. Or maybe maybe do Concealed Cards first, because you could Comfy again. Yeah, the concealed card ends up happening after that. I think that makes sense. Beach court now, double cross switcher. You could double cross switcher the ice cube. Uh, I don't know if that's worth it to be honest. Goes with the beach court push. Hmm. Huh. I don't know if I like that or not. Do we do we want to put beach court in play here? It doesn't give anything to Consta, but now if Consta puts Lost City in play, you have one less out to Lost City. But it's something you can maybe use multiple times. I'm actually not sure, to be honest. I don't know how I feel about that. And I think I do like the idea of punching Mew versus, like, double cross switching the Ice Cube and taking the KO. Yeah, I guess Beach Court's probably fine. I'm trying to think of, like, we ever, like how much do we want to save it. Bumping Path is nice to be able to get access to Greninja sometimes. Okay, there's a four Seal Stone from Consta off the top. She, I don't even know what you grab, though. The hand is, like, so bad. Maybe you just grab a Judge. Yeah, and that's what Consta's going to grab. <laughs> going to go for the Judge. This is actually kind of like one of the drawbacks of playing the Roxanne over the Iono and the Mew deck. In these situations where you're just like, I just want to draw cards with a draw supporter, um, you can't use the Roxanne in the early game. So you're like kind of forced down the Judge route or the Avery. Um, but even though like Roxanne is like a better a better hand disruption card in the late game to give you more cards and your opponent a few cards. Um, uh, I'll watch it yesterday, Slap. Um, the Iono is like, you can disrupt your opponent down to two or one late game. It doesn't hit as hard on three prize cards, I guess. But, yeah, it doesn't hit as hard on three prize cards, but... The Iono here would have, like, seen plus two cards, obviously, so... Isn't uh, Iono Judge split best for Mew? Well, Consta plays... And there's just a concede from Consta. Consta plays one Judge, one Roxanne. So still has a late game disruption card in the Roxanne. Um, and an early game disruption card in the Judge. So he's playing the Roxanne over the Iono in this uh, in their build. But I'm not sure which one. I, I would say I like Iono more overall. He's just like, it's just like, it's just not a dead card. Like Roxanne is just a dead card early. And usually as Mew, you're not like, you're not usually putting yourself in a situation where it's like, you need to draw those extra cards when while disrupting your opponent. Also, you can't Roxanne to one. You can Iono to one. So... It just feels a little bit more flex. The Iono feels a little bit more flexible and kind of does the exact same thing Roxanne does as far as hurting your opponent, but has better early game, um, better early game stuff. So the prize cards here for Kansa, nothing really super relevant. But I don't know if we're going to see Arthur's prize card. So a couple mulligans, two mulligans coming in. That Ditto's not doing the job it's supposed to. Plus one basic, not doing anything. And now, oh, there's a Coles there for Arthur. 
So this is like, so Kansa's going to get to go first for the first time here. I assume Kansa's choosing to go first here. This will help Kansa a lot with just like establishing a board that isn't as disrupted by Spirit Tomb. Unless Arthur opened the Spirit Tomb, which Arthur didn't. And we do see a decent amount of basics here for Kansa as well. And has a cram matic Has a lot of stuff to work with in the hand, to be honest. Um, we might see the cram away a cram. There's a tablet in hand as well. You could cram away a tablet here, probably. You want to keep some tablets around for the possibility of Psychic Leaping in this matchup. Um, but you don't need a lot of them. You just need a, a couple. Um, also, be interested to see if Kansa like, aggressively sets up the Ice Cube or not to be able to have an answer to the Spirit Tomb. Of course, Arthur could always put the Manaphy on the bench, but then Arthur really doesn't want to have Manaphy and Spirit Tomb on the bench. The bench starts to get pretty clogged at that point. And then when the Judges and the Rock's hands start to hit, you have like way less to work with on board as far as attackers go. And you could like start to whiff attacks because of that. Cram before VIP, yes, no. Um... Depends if it would change what you get off your VIP, but if you always get the same things off the VIP pass, then I would cram afterwards. But if it changed it, then I guess cram first, if cram would always get a VIP. Um, but for Kansa here, I don't know if the cram does get a VIP. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I'm curious to see what... Con I, I don't even... I mean, yeah, I'm curious to see what Kansa actually crams away as well. I guess you probably cram away the tablet to keep the other cram, to be honest. You don't, like I said, you don't really need all the tablets. There was no tablets prized. So cramming away a, a tablet here is probably fine from console. Keep another cram around. Yep, there we go. Cram on tablet. And heads. Does I don't like that prioritization though from Consta. Oh, does is gonna fail it. So is benching the Meloetta here. I thought we were just gonna get another battle VIP pass here. I don't like prioritizing triple me before triple Genesect. Well, unless the Meloetta's coming down, I guess. There's attached to Genesect. But no, but the Meloetta's wait. Does Kansa just keep it open the option? Can't fail cram. Oh wait, yeah, you can't fail cram. <laughs> oh, you think he rolled tails? Oh, did he roll tails? Dude, it looked like a heads. It looked like a heads, but it's just because it's a see-through die, probably. It looks like a two. I am assuming that's not a two though. Because yeah, you can't fail cram. And I don't know why you would ever fail cram. Oh yeah, I don't like the well, unless Kansa... Triple Mew plus Ice Q is fine, I guess. If Kansa's, like, really, um... Yeah, it depends what Kansa's board state wants... To, what, what Kansa wants his board state to look like. If he wants the Ice Q, then this is... I'm okay with Triple Mew Ice Q. But if he ends up just benching another Genesect anyways, then the third Genesect should come down before the third Mew. Every single time. Um, second Genesect should come down before second Mew most of the time. Third Genesect should come out down before third Mew most of the time. Um, you're just drawing less cards on the turn. Um... See, now it's only a draw for two. And then if we draw one with the next Genesect, then maybe with the next Genesect, we could draw one. Second Cram coming in. Maybe Clutch here. There's a... Is this a head? That looks like a that looks like a 2-2. Two, two. It's all twos. There's a Battle VIP pass. And I assume he's just going to grab the Genesect. Maybe he's going to gonna go for the Ice Cube, though? No, he just goes for the Genesect. See, that's why you should, always, you should always just grab third Genesect first. You should always just grab third Genesect first. If you're, this, is, this is what I thought Kanto's board state was going to end up looking like with Genesect, 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 Mew, Mew, Mew. Uh, triple, triple. Uh, so you should always just grab third Genesect first, because Genesect draws cards, Mew does not. Genesect can find Mew, Mew can't find Genesect. In the end, doesn't get punished, because finds all of them before needing to draw with even the second Genesect, so... Um, and it looks like did not care about having the potential of the Ice Q as well, which I think is probably correct. You probably just don't care about Ice Q. That's why I thought maybe that's what Kansa was thinking about, though, with how Kansa was playing it, but... Um, for Sealstone also has an Ultra Ball in hand, but I don't know if there's two dead cards in hand. doesn't look like it. So just Genesect for one. Has it uh, Sparkle for next turn? Has a pretty good hand for next turn. Definitely going to be able to pull off an attack next turn no matter what. I also don't like this Choice Spell attachment here from Consta. Um, I guess I don't dislike it, but you could just hold it. There's no reason to play it, basically, I'm pretty sure. Um, you could just hold the... Just hold the Choice Spell. There's no reason to like play the Choice Spell here, I don't think. Yeah, what's the reason to play the Choice Spell here? Is there a reason? I don't think there is. You just hold it. You're not going to get hand disrupted. You just hold it. Hold it for turn. You might want to discard it depending on what your top deck so. Like, by by default against most matchups, you should attach. Um, so it's probably just a habit thing where it's like, oh, I have choice belt, attach choice belt. Um, so for Arthur here. Oh, I remember watching this live. So this is pretty unfortunate. When do we see the prize cards for Arthur, though? Did that ever happen? We don't see. Wait, when did we see Arthur's prize cards? It happens at some point. Is this the game where Arthur prized two Comfy? I think this is the game where Arthur prized uh, two Comfy. And then Lost owns a Comfy, which is correct. Like, this sequence here is correct from Arthur. But 
gets uh has unfortunate odds in the prize cards where there's too comfy prized. So now when this VIP pass gets used, yeah, it just hurts. This, is, this definitely just hurts for Arthur here because I think Arthur played it correctly. Um, they showed it before Consos turn one. Oh, did they? Dude, I swear that it didn't happen. But we saw Consos prize cards, but we didn't see. I thought we didn't see. Maybe they showed it at some point. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, double comfy surprise. So this really is uh, really unfortunate for Arthur. Like, especially actually against Mew. Depend well, you have Spear Tomb in this situation as uh, Arthur. There are situations where you want like triple or even quad comfy in play as Arthur, but we definitely saw it live. This is why you play always play heavy ball frame one. True. At least the Spear Tomb is not prized as well. Um. <clears throat> But it's there. Okay, I must have just, I must have just whiffed it. I, was, I must have just missed it. But yeah, this is where the double comfy is prized, and then this hurts a lot here for Arthur, because I mean, two comfy is like super important to have in play. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be hard for just it's gonna be hard for Arthur just to get to any amount of cards in the loss zone. Um, goes for Spirit Tomb, goes for Cram. Can definitely still pull off a, a Cram attack at the very least this turn from Arthur, but not looking great. Not looking great. It's gonna be hard to build up that loss zone. Very, very hard to build up the Lost Zone. And if Arthur knew, Arthur would have taken that Comfy or the cram the Comfy off that, probably over the VIP pass, maybe over something else. Um, that's a bent-ass Urgle. <laughs> Dude, that Urgle is hella bent. There's a Comfy. There's a Switch Cart. Comfy. Ooh, comfy number one and only Comfy coming in. Psychic versus Water. Probably Lost on the Water. I don't know what's prize here, to be honest, though. Um, now you can use Greninja to draw two, but you need a vacuum here to be able to... Oh, there's the vacuum in the hand. Okay, so we will see Arthur get that turn one attack off, at the very least. Not gonna draw with the Greninja. I don't like that. I guess... I don't know. You need to get through your deck. Especially in a situation like this, where you don't... You have one Comfy. Like, you need to find your other vacuum as Arthur here. You need to find your other vacuum, because you need to build up your loss zone somehow. It's not happening through a single Comfy, so... You do have a escape rope in hand. The reason Arthur doesn't want to play escape rope here, though, is because you do... I don't know. This is close. Because you do want Cram to punch the Genesect. It is important for Cram to punch Genesect. You don't want to escape rope and then punch a Mew, because it's going to get psychically back to the deck, and the damage is going to be removed from play. But also, you need to find Colrus and your other vacuum, so you can actually build up your loss zone to, to actually use Mirage Gate, Mirage Gate plays. Because like Arthur could get rid of this energy, draw two with Greninja, go two cards deeper in the deck. If you draw an energy or a switch cart... Use that to move the the cram to the active. The escape rope, yeah. The I mean, the damage is very valuable on this Genesect, but you also need to make sure you can actually. It's only valuable on the Genesect if you get to seven in the loss zone to use Greninja, and you get to ten in the loss zone to use Sableye. Otherwise, this cram damage isn't that valuable. So I don't know about this to be honest. I, I kind of would have liked to have maybe seen the. I think I would like to have seen the Greninja get used there. I'm not 100 percent sure though, to be honest. Though. Like it's this this cram damage doesn't matter if you don't get to seven in the loss zone, and um. And 10 in the loss zone. It's just going to be there on the rest, for the rest of the game on the bench. And Consul's just not going to care. So. A little bit unsure about that, to be honest. Not sure, not sure, not sure. Uh, we do see the fusion energy. You're going to get loaded onto a Mew here for Consul. So Consul will only have access to two Genesects for the rest of the game. Unless that Spirit Tomb is, is knocked out. So going to be a decent hit to the draw power for Consul. It doesn't need a whole ton turn to turn to actually take knockouts. Against a Lost Box deck, of course, but... Um. Yeah, not going to be a huge deal. We're going to be uh. Yeah, to take knockouts turn to turn, you don't need a whole ton. You don't need a whole ton. From you, turn to turn, you're not going to a whole ton. First Genesec draw, double turbo, no switch card yet. Also, did lose the four seal stone, so I guess it's possible. Concept maybe doesn't attack this turn. I guess that is possible, right? Oh, no, we can put double... Oh, no, no, we've already attached for turn. It is possible Consa doesn't attack this turn, actually. Um, Palpaz to be able to draw more cards this turn. Shuffles back the Sparkle. Oh, I remember this turn as well. So, second Genesect coming in for... Plays the Tablet as well. Gotta get that Switch card. Genesect for two. This is actually a pretty big hit here. Hits the Switch card off the top. Pretty huge. It was only a draw for two. I don't know, there's like, what... Three switch cards in the deck, plus you have uh, two four seal stones left. There's a decent shot of getting there, I guess, but the whiff there would have been what Arthur needed. Arthur, If Arthur could have bought like one extra turn there, that would have been like pretty big. Got an extra turn to work with there would have been pretty big. 
Yeah, now this is like going back to like the not using Greninja last turn from Arthur. Now Arthur needs so much this turn. He needs so so much this turn. This Comfy has to do like insane work right here. This is like literally needs to like be a Colrus or an energy and then get sort of a cross switcher to get a water energy. Now we use Greninja. See, we would have like okay, so I'm not it's, a, it's like a little bit anecdotal, but like if Arthur had used Oh, actually, no, it might have been the cross switcher actually instead. But we could have double cross switcher another Genesect, actually, I think. All right. But we do whiff here from Arthur, I think. I don't think we see a single an attack here on this turn. But yeah, just the idea of digging deeper into your deck is just super important. Does find the second vacuum, though. There is a second vacuum there, so that is going to help with our loss zone. But we're not getting to a, a relevant number here, to be honest, from Arthur. And then could get this... Do you have to escape rope this Comfy out of the active <laughs> as Arthur? I feel like you do. Yeah, there's the escape rope. Um, another Mew Max send up from Consta. Just push the big stuff in the active. Sends up a Sableye, but oh, I think it's another misplay from. This is the exact same misplay that Arthur made. This is the exact same misplay that Arthur made last game or the game one. Maybe you should definitely push up the Spirit Tomb at this point. I feel like there is only two Genesect with Fusion Energy. So if the Tomb does get KO'd, then the third Genesect will be activated to be able to draw cards. But if Consta goes put down Lost City and Lost City is one of your Sableyes. And the Lost City doesn't get bumped, and then Consta goes, like, boss, Lost City, or other Sableye? Like, that's so bad. Like, I'm pretty sure Consta here probably realizes, oh, wait, Arthur is literally living off of that Comfy and Greninja. So I think if Consta gets a boss here, Consta's going to boss KO Comfy or Greninja. Or that's what I'd like to see Consta do. Um, I'd like to see Consta boss KO Greninja or the Comfy here. But if, if like, Consta could just whiff boss, right? If you whiff boss, but may, uh, maybe I got the Lost City. Now I put Lost City in play, KO your Sableye, goes to the Lost Zone. Maybe Lost City doesn't get bumped next turn. Lost on the Greninja. Lost on the other Sableye. Like, you just, like, run out of attackers at that point as Arthur and can't win the game. And now that damage on that Greninja or that Genesect that you uh, worked so hard for or put all that investment into is just not usable. And, this is, and, and like, this is what I was saying as well. The, the, the cram damage is only relevant if you can do more damage later in the game. Um, and we see this turn, Arthur is just not doing anything. But if Arthur had maybe used the... Greninja on last turn, and then use Greninja this turn. Maybe this next card is, or the next card after the next card is a Colrus, and then that Colrus leads to attacking with Greninja this turn. So maybe you sacrifice a Cram Punch into a Mew for a 110 for a Greninja play this turn, right? So, um, like I said, on that turn previously, I would have liked to have seen Arthur just use the Greninja. It's really cool to punch Genesect with Cram. It's a really good play, but with the the lack of draw support on the board from Arthur because of the Comfy's being prized, I feel like you just got to all in your draw support every single time. So, um... Boss Comfy seems very cool. Yeah, Boss Comfy is good here. Honestly, Lost City, the best play for Consta here, I think it's probably Boss Lost City, the Greninja. Boss the Greninja, Lost City it. And then, like, I think you just win as Consta. There's not enough damage in the in the game anymore. Has an Avery, so it looks like it is going to be a KO through the active, though, on the save. There's no Boss in hand to speak of. The Consta's like, all right, I'm just going to draw my cards. <laughs> you can figure out which one to discard. And Arthur should discard the Spirit Tomb here. But if Arthur discards the Spirit Tomb here, you probably should have pushed the Spirit Tomb to the active as well for the turn. So I think Consta's like realizing the no does get rid of the Sableye, dude. I mean, can recover the Sableye with Super Rod, and if the active one gets KO'd without a loss, you can recover that one as well. But it's so much more work to put it back in the deck, get it back out of the deck. You could just like discard the stupid Spirit, <laughs> just get rid of it. Yeah, I definitely don't like Arthur. Arthur is like, uh, yeah, Arthur just needs to like get rid of the uh, get rid of the Spirit Tomb here. Give up on the Spirit Tomb. Arthur's putting way too much value into the Spirit Tomb. Way too much value into the Spirit Tomb. Um, Max Miracle copy from Consta. Goodbye, Sableye. Does have the Greninja still in play here for Arthur. So the, the Greninja's like a possibility for an attacker. This Comfy literally needs to find a Energy Oracle or so. Super Rod Bites the Dust. But it's a four Seal Stone. Sheesh. I mean, that's just... I don't know. That's just game at this point. I think Consta's too far ahead now. Yeah. No draw power on the board. Get sure the choice belt off the active. Uh, to get to seven, is able to Mirage Gate now. Oh, can we get attack with Greninja here? Actually, if there's an attack with Greninja here from Arthur, there's a little bit of hope. I don't know if there is an attack from Greninja happening here, though. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. The Greninja's getting loaded up. I assume the Greninja can attack if we're going this route, but maybe just sitting out the deck and then it's going to retreat to Spirit Tomb and pass. We'll see. Maybe it's just going to pass as well. Maybe it just leaves the Comfy in the active. Um... At this point, if you have enough pivot cards to work with, you probably... Oh, does not have the play. No. It has only one energy. You probably don't retreat, though. Oh, wait. We haven't used concealed cards yet. Okay, my bad. My bad. We still have concealed cards. I thought we had already used that. Heavy ball and nest ball. Oh, okay. Hold up. Nest ball becomes Dragonite. Force seal stone becomes 
Polaris. All right, we're not done yet. Yeah, I thought the Greninja would already been used at this point, but we're, hang on, something's happening. Something's happening here. Now you have a two prizer in play, which is obviously not good, but minimal cooking happening here for Arthur. It's still working. We're still doing it. And now, what do we even look? I guess you still look for the attack with the Greninja this turn from Arthur. You just hit two Genesex. You hit the two Genesex with the fusions for 90-90. All right, here we go. Is it good enough? That's not the hand we want to be looking at here. There we go. There's a gate. Okay, there's a gate and a super rod. So we can see the Greninja attack this turn. Did just lost on a Sableye, unfortunately. Here comes the heavy ball. All right, we found ourselves. I actually, honestly, I forgot about the heavy ball, actually, when we were talking about the two comfies being prized. There was still a possibility to find a comfy off those prize cards. Um, has Concert really only drawn one prize card? It's been two, right? Concert on two prize cards or one prize card? It's been two. Am I trolling? Roxanne's are also online next turn, which is a pretty big deal as well. I feel like I'm not trolling here. All right, Sableye, Water, Psychic. So we'll see the uh, Mirage Gate here to get Lightning Water. Water Greninja, Lightning Active, Retreat, Attack. There's nothing behind on the board uh, all game, basically. Okay, that's what I... Yeah, okay. They were pretty bad at updating the prizes this turn. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't trolling. I'm like, I'm not the one who's trolling here. All right, what does it look like from here? So Consta has four prize cards left. Can just go next turn, knock out Greninja, go down to three. And then Arthur goes... If Arthur can Greninja again and then save I would wipe the board. Oh, no, not quite, actually. Sheesh. There's still a damage short there from Arthur. So Consta's probably just going to KO through the active and then boss KO Dragonite to close it out at the end. So Arthur has to hope that, like, the Roxanne stopped the boss KO and the Dragonite at the end of the game. Basically, at this point, it feels like. So, there's the 90s coming in. 170, 90. And then if we go 90, 90. Yeah, there's no way to win. So, Consta's at, Consta's at 4. This turn goes down to 3. If Arthur goes Greninja again, 90, 90. Still short by 1 damage. Um... Yeah. Okay. Rip was also high through game one now. I was hoping you wouldn't watch. I always watch. Where is it? Half toe, are you Arthur? It was still pretty unlikely that you get there, but you had an out. You did have an out. They like chaos two Genesex? Yeah, it chaos two Genesex, but that's not enough. Um Say by ten and two. The 10 and 2. It's broken. Uh, 10, 2. No, but you don't want to KO 2 Genesex here. KO 2 Genesex doesn't win you the game. Oh, okay. So, no. Arthur's game plan is the Sableye double cross switcher play. I always forget about the cross switchers because I just don't play with cross switchers in Lost Box ever. But yeah, Arthur's play is Sableye 10 and 2 into double cross switcher with Dragonite KO the last Genesex. Okay. There's a there's a play there for sure. Now, I'm curious to see. Consta's hand kind of sucks, but has two vacuums, it looks like. So, is Consta going to. How aggressively is Consta going to KO this Dragonite versus just KO this Greninja? Um, yeah, it is going to be the 10 and 2 into Dragonite Double Cross Switcher. But I believe there's two Cross Switchers in the Lost Zone so far, so it'd be hard. It's going to be a, a lot to draw into at the end of the game. But it does play the two Rocks hand, so like it is possible. All right, so Consta is going to go for the aggressive KO on the Dragonite. I'm not sure I like this. I mean, I don't know if Consta has any other options, though, to be honest. Because I feel like going for a more disruptive route this turn from Consta would have been better. Like, I think if Consta could have found, like, Judge, Knockout Greninja, even Lost Zone the Greninja, maybe. I don't know. But it's gonna go for but it depends what the hand is. Like maybe you only have like stuff to uh maybe you only have stuff to work with to like KO the active anyways. Like you gotta play the boss, you can draw more cards, yada yada yada, and like, go from there. And then crosswitcher KO last chance. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that play, yeah, yeah, yeah. The crosswitcher play is just never on my mind. I'm never thinking about cross switchers in Lost Box. I'm always thinking about other ways to win. But yeah, the cross switchers do work here. Um I guess boss uh boss would also be a uh possibility. But yeah, there's no boss in Arthur's deck, obviously. Yo, what's up, Max? All right, vacuum number one. There's two vacuums in here, I believe, here for Consta. So it's going to start to clear out the hand a little bit, draw more cards. It does need 
Actually, what does Kansa need here? Kansa needs a tablet, right? Did Kansa actually whiff the KO? That'd actually be kind of crazy. Oh, no, no, it is a KO. There was a tablet plate. Okay, okay. I was like, all right, that's actually like, that could be big. All right, so Arthur can still do the play. Arthur still can go Sableye for four. Honestly, if Arthur can get the Sableye for four plus a Roxanne this turn and limit down to four fusion Pokemon in play to like nerf the draw of the Genesex, um, no tabby needed. Oh, because there wasn't a double turbo. I was counting double turbo in my head. That makes sense. Then it's possible Kansa won't be able to draw into the Roxanne themselves and won't be able to Roxanne Arthur back to like stop the Dragonite play from happening. But the uh, but it does start with a Colors here from Arthur. So would have definitely liked the Roxanne to limit Kansa's outs to Roxanne. But did get Switch Cart Energy Nest Ball. So the Sableye play is possible here. Ooh, Roxanne Handle also, awesome. that sucks. But you do need the other three cards. You don't really have a choice here from Arthur. Yeah, literally, you literally have to take these cards. It's going to be... Is there even two cross switchers left? There is. It's all there. Actually, there's three cross switchers left. There's one in the hand as well. It's all there for Arthur, but it's going to be really hard to draw into. Like, literally, it's another situation just like game one. Arthur, like, has to top deck Roxanne um, next turn or how, get it this turn to be able to make this play work on the next turn. What are the options here? Is there an escape rope for a cross switcher? I actually don't know about that one, to be honest, because I believe there is a third cross switcher in the deck. Now, it doesn't mean next turn you only need two of the three, but you also need to find Roxanne. I don't hate the idea of taking the escape rope there, to be honest. That way you can start your next turn with Comfy, escape rope into Comfy to try and find that Roxanne. Um... <clears throat> I think there's a third cross switcher left. I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure about the cross switcher versus because it, it is easier to find the two cross switchers. But the biggest card for Arthur to find is the Roxanne, and Escape Rope helps you find Roxanne. I guess the cross switchers also help you find the Roxanne, but it's like if you draw to the double cross switcher, anyways. I don't know. It's probably not worth overly thinking about. It's it's probably pretty close. Um, it might just be re best to just take the cross switcher, anyways, because that way, like your your loss zoning becomes like less situational. Um. Your, your loss only becomes less situational because then if like this next turn, if Arthur goes Comfy into Roxanne Cross Switcher, it's like, well, I have the other two Cross Switchers. So. Um, so now Arthur's just praying for no Roxanne from Consta, and Consta's praying to find that Roxanne. Um, but only has one Genesec to work with as well here for Consta. There's only one Genesec to work with here. Uh, Bunchy Nice You doesn't matter. Has another Mew in hand, but yeah, only has one draw here to work with. An Ultra Ball has like an escape rope and something else. I can't tell what the other card. I mean, maybe it's double escape rope, to be honest, actually. You might just actually play both of those here as Consta. The question is, will the Roxanne be, be found? Or is there even the Roxanne in the in the deck? Notice how unlucky it is my last prize is our rope cart. That is kind of unfortunate for sure. Because th those are definitely better than Colrus and whatever. The, would you get wa well, the water's kind of nice though, right? Because you're out of energy. The water's good. But it would have been nice to get like water switch card, probably. But the Colrus could get you there as well. I guess like. Colrus is not that good here if Consta finds... Colrus isn't very good here if Consta actually finds... Roxanne. Because, like, it's going to be hard to, like, be able to pull off the combo through a Colrus. It'll be way easier to pull off through a Roxanne. Uh, but I think Consta only has the Judge here. So it might not be too difficult here for Arthur to... So for Arthur to get to the play, it wouldn't be as difficult. You need to draw into... So the Water Energy is good, because I think that is the last Energy prized... Or the last energy in the deck is just a water now, I believe. So it needs to find water rod to rod the Dragonite back in the deck. Then it has to find the Dragonite and then double cross it. So there's a lot for Arthur to find here. Arthur needs to find a lot here. A lot. <laughs> we'll see. Consta definitely would have wished... Consta definitely wanted the Roxanne there. I don't know if the Roxanne was in the deck. I think it was. Um, but didn't find it. All right, here we go. Oh, the Ice Cube Snipe. I didn't even think about that. That's genius from Consta. Just ignore... Yeah, why would you want the, the free combi push-up? I mean, it's a good play, but the Sableye can retreat anyways. And you're probably not retreating anything else anyways as Arthur, but it does take away the second Sableye or the second Comfy, so now there's like less draw power for sure. I didn't even think about that. I thought we were always carrying Sableye here as Consta, but the Comfy KO is just so much better. All right, let's see what Arthur got the Rock... If Arthur got the Roxanne. Arthur got like all the dead cards. <laughs> That is so bad. There's no good cards in that hand there for Arthur. I guess the Beach Court... No, the Beach Court's not even good because the Sableye can already retreat. 
There's an artisan. I don't even know if there's anything to grab off the artisan here. Nope. But the Roxanne was on the bottom of the deck, so now it's going to go to the top of the deck. But I, it might not... No, it is possible. It's so... Yeah, Arthur basically has to go retreat to Comfy, and Comfy basically has to see Roxanne to have a chance here from Arthur. Damn, that's like a really bad draw there for Arthur. Two Battle VIP pass, two stadiums, but all those are like dead cards. And is there a Roxanne? No, it's Chorus, but Chorus isn't good enough, I don't think, because Chorus should have to see... I appreciate the gift of the sub there, Snoopy, over to Hefto. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible for Chorus to see the cards. I don't think it's possible. You need it needs to be Roxanne. It needs to be Roxanne. I said you judge into all the dead cards. Because Raikou's not in the deck either, right? I think Raikou hit the law zone. To be honest with how this game played out, trying to prioritize keeping well, Raikou is actually just like the way game one and game three played out, the Raikou is like really good. Yeah, the Raikou's really good. All right, Roxanne and Battle VIP pass hit the discard pile. But that's it. There's nothing else to do. Oh, wait, we can still... I guess we can still Greninja here for Arthur. Is that ever good enough? I'm trying to think if that ever leads to enough. It might. I guess Arthur could just, like, double cross switcher up the the thing and hope it gets stuck. But you have to... That's what you have to do. I think that's the play here, then, for Arthur. It's literally double cross switcher up Genesec and hope it gets stuck. Oh, there we go. Cross switcher. And then it, then it has to win next turn, which is still pretty hard. I also, I don't think, actually, I don't know if Arthur has enough super odds to win the game either. Probably. I would assume so, but actually, I don't know. What do we need? Roxanne, Crosswitcher, Prey, you stall. I mean, that's what, we, that's what we have to go with now as Arthur is stall the Genesect. So bench Comfy, I think, probably. I think it's fine to bench Comfy here. I don't know if I like the super odd first, though. He's thinking about... It's like, oh, there's two prize cards left for Arthur, though. So you could just attack with Sableye. You can stall the Genesect with Sableye, right? Oh, okay. I didn't even think about that. So that's the play for sure. I don't even know if you want the Dragonite, then, as Arthur here. Yeah, you don't even want Dragonite as Arthur here, right? Because you can just go this route. I, I guess, actually, Arthur probably should have taken... Arthur should have taken another energy there. There's a super odd left in the deck, but actually, if Consta can't move the Genesect, but has boss, Consta could just boss up Spirit Tomb and pass, and then Arthur can't move the Spirit Tomb until Arthur gets super odd, and then... So yeah, that's a mistake there from Arthur. Arthur... Oh no, we have Beach Court in hand. Never mind, I take it back. We have Beach Court. So yeah, it's, double, it's bringing up the Genesect. Oh, you can bring up the Ice Q as well, right? Which one has more tree cost? Goes with the Genesect, though. Save Lie up, and then what? Just 112 on the... Or 120 on the Genesect. And then over to Consta... And constant did top deck or has a scare up as well, so that works as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the I do have the YouTube comments open as well, yeah. I forgot about just using Sableye this turn, but I guess that makes sense on Arthur's side. You just use Sableye and Prey, but it wasn't pretty it wasn't very likely to actually stop Consta from winning. Yeah. But yeah. I was pretty well played on both sides. Like I said, Consta definitely threw game one. Had an out in game one and didn't go for it. Uh definitely put too much prioritization on the spirit team, I think in the games as well should have given up um yeah arthur definitely should have given up spirit tomb in game one in game three at uh a couple points in game three at one point in game one and then i also think should have just been more aggressive with the genesect draw um as well like that first that first like the cram punch into genesect is really good but i think making sure you can play the game is just more important there for how little draw power arthur had set up at that point um yeah, Mew does it again in Europe, which is not a surprise, to be honest. 